Hello everyone. I'm Garv Malhotra from Skywards Law. It is my privilege to be invited by Madhyastha, the ADR cell of Bhartiya Vidya Peet University, to prepare this short overview of the buzzword in international arbitration, expedited procedures. We are recording this video at the end of 2020, a year of sudden changes. I hope all of you have managed to retain your sanity and smiles at the end of this year. And I wish that the coming years bring you a lot of health and happiness. I'm sure you appreciate that this video is intended as a training tool for students and arbitration practitioners. It is neither legal advice nor advertisement. So without any further ado, let's jump straight in. Expedited procedures in international arbitration. Now, expedited procedures is a term of art in international arbitration, which means that it has received a specific connotation or has a special meaning in the subject. And the meaning is essentially it refers to a slew of procedural options that are available to parties under certain arbitration rules in order to fast track the arbitration proceedings or parts thereof in specific circumstances. The need for expedited procedures developed because of the need for quick, effective and cost efficient arbitration procedures. And this was especially so in matters which were urgent or of a lesser quantum. And this problem of complexity and high costs of conducting arbitration has been receiving substantial attention, especially over the last decade. And that has led to a series of initiatives by the international arbitration community that are aimed at streamlining the arbitration process and reducing the costs of arbitration, especially in matters which are urgent or of a lower quantum. These initiatives, while aimed at producing excellent results, have often led to fragmented solutions to these problems. And these solutions include new instruments such as the Prague rules, which have made very few inroads into common law jurisdictions or through amendments to existing set of rules, like the existing institutional rules of the International Chamber of Commerce or the Singapore International Arbitration Center. The use of these expedited procedures or fast track summary procedures is relatively new to the field of international arbitration. However, these procedures are found in many national laws, for instance, Order 14 of the Singapore Rules of Court or Order 13A of the Indian Code of Civil Procedure. And while the legal concept of expedited procedures may have been inspired from national laws, it operates very differently. And that is simply because these procedural devices in the context of international arbitration are governed by the institutional rules and are impacted by other uh, applicable laws. For instance, the law of the seat of arbitration or law of the place of enforcement. So in summary, expedited procedures are procedural mechanisms which can be used to fast track the arbitration or certain parts of the arbitration. Their introduction into the arbitration system was a part of the broader attempt by the arbitration community to manage costs and complexities in arbitration proceedings. Now that we have a broad macro understanding of what expedited procedures hope to accomplish, let us look at some of the types of expedited procedures. Expedited procedures can be of many types. A few common expedited procedures 
that are seen in international arbitration include mechanisms for expedited constitution of the arbitral tribunal which includes emergency arbitration and fast track constitution mechanisms secondly it includes mechanisms for early or summary dismissal of claims and third it includes procedures for fast track conduct of the arbitration proceedings which we will be looking at in a little more detail as we go further at this stage there are three key things to bear in mind first it is not the case that all arbitration rules have all or even some of these procedural mechanisms second in practice the term expedited procedures which is a general term is often used interchangeably with the procedures for fast tracking the conduct of the arbitration proceedings and third the fundamental principle underlying these procedures remains the principle of equal and reasonable opportunity to be heard while i would love to delve into a practical and jurisprudential analysis of each of these procedures and their strategic application i realize that it may not be possible for me to do justice to these topics in this short video and therefore i will only briefly touch upon the procedural options for fast tracking the conduct of arbitration proceedings fast track procedures in international arbitration are aimed at trimming the existing procedural steps and running the arbitration in a simplified possibly truncated and relatively inexpensive manner in practice this just means lesser procedural steps and shorter timelines fast track procedures are often used in disputes that are valued less than a few million dollars and the exact monetary threshold depends on the applicable uh, institutional rules for instance the sic rules prescribe a threshold of 6 million singapore dollars which is approximately 33 crore indian rupees the effect of applying these fast track procedures depends again on the rules but some common examples that are seen in many institutional rules include appointment of a sole arbitrator instead of three arbitrators limiting the rounds of pleadings and written submissions that parties are allowed to make before the tribunal um conducting hearings on a document only basis and uh, obliging the arbitrators to deliver the award in a truncated period of time now parties may already have access to these procedures under their existing contracts but they may also have the option of opting in or opting out of these procedural mechanisms in fact parties can even agree to arbitrate existing disputes in an expedited manner after the dispute has arisen for an articulately explained example i rely on a paragraph from the leading arbitration authority redfern and hunter starting at para 6.34 on page 364 and i quote a notable example of a fast track arbitration under standard arbitration rules involved the fast world of formula 1 f1 motor racing at the time that the dispute arose the first grand prix season or first grand prix of the season was traditionally held in melbourne in march in preparation for the race teams shipped their cars from europe in mid february at the end of one season in the mid 1990s one team fell into dispute with the federation internationale de l'automobile 
FIA, headquartered in Paris, which regulates the F1 championship in accordance with a comprehensive set of rules. The team in question, which was sponsored by a tobacco company, wished to paint one of its cars in the color of one of its brands of cigarettes and the other in the livery of another of its brands. The FIA objected on the grounds that the championship is a team event and insisted that all cars from the same team must be painted in identical livery. The constitution of the FIA, to which every team must sign up while entering into the championship, contained an ICC arbitration clause. By Christmas Eve, in the year in question, it became apparent that a resolution of the dispute would not be achieved by negotiation. The team and the FIA agreed that they would submit to a fast-track ICC arbitration with a view to obtaining a final decision by the end of January so that the cars could be painted and shipped in time to reach Australia by the end of January. End of February. The F1 team filed a request for arbitration with the ICC between Christmas Day and New Year's Eve. A three-member arbitral tribunal was appointed on New Year's Day. This tribunal circulated draft terms of reference on the same day to which all concerned signed within two more days. A sequential exchange of memoranda to which the parties attached the documents on which they relied, then took place at seven-day intervals, followed by a simultaneous exchange of witness statements within a few more days. A handful of disputed documents requests were resolved by prompt procedural orders from the tribunal, and an eight-hour witness hearing took place on the last Saturday of January. The tribunal deliberated on the Sunday and sent its final award to the ICC court for scrutiny by fax and courier at lunchtime the next day, Monday, together with separate signed but undated signature pages. The award was approved at an emergency session of the ICC court the same afternoon and the decision was notified to the parties by fax and overnight courier the same day. The parties received the fully reasoned award on the last day of January, one month precisely from the day on which the tribunal was appointed. And the cars were painted and shipped to Australia in good time for the first Grand Prix race of the season. This case demonstrates what speed can be achieved even before a Grand Prix begins when the parties have a joint will to obtain early resolution and the arbitral tribunal is disposed and available to act on that will." Unquote. In conclusion, expedited procedures are aimed at reducing the complexity and costs of conducting arbitration proceedings in certain circumstances. While such mechanisms are welcome steps from the international arbitration community, just like the test of the pudding lies in the eating, the test of arbitration lies in the enforcement of the arbitral award. And the enforcement in the context of expedited procedures has been less than uniform across different countries. In my view, such mechanisms are very useful, but they are just a part of the larger picture where our procedures have become unnecessarily complex. Most arbitration practitioners spend countless hours of their career in the proverbial trenches of document discovery. And this automatically translates into increased costs for clients. We also face the need to brainstorm and find solutions to various other urgent problems, like the arbitrator's due process paranoia. And we need to embrace other game-changing technologies like hyperlinking, virtual conferencing, and predictive coding in order to make the process more cost-efficient. In sum, 
A comprehensive overhaul of the process is overdue and solutions must be uniformly implemented across jurisdictions. Now, this is the part where I usually invite questions from the audience. Given the limitations of this format, I invite you to write to us at academia at skywardslaw.com and we will try our best to answer at least a few questions. Thank you for your time and stay safe.